if you really want to make money in the market, you need three things. You need a dog, a human, and a computer. The dog is there to keep the human away from the computer because humans are emotional. We've got all of our behavioral biases. So the more that we can start letting the computers take the emotion out of the equation, that's only going to make everybody a better investor. When we think about the cryptocurrency space, especially from the investment point of view, and clearly it's exploded you know, in terms of market cap and also how much interest we're getting from institutional investors and retail, but that really leaves investors with only two choices. You're either going to be passive exposure, meaning you have to buy and hold, but that leaves you fully exposed to the downside and to the cycles of Bitcoin, which as we've seen, you know, 50, 75, 90% drawdowns. So that's not necessarily a level of volatility that people are willing to handle. tolerate, exactly. The other option that people are gonna have is to find their way into highly specialized hedge funds that do these kind of advanced trading strategies to capitalize on Bitcoin's potential, but without exposing you to the risks. But those hedge funds can have very high minimums, lockup periods, liquidity issues, transparency. So again, that doesn't really serve investors. So what we're trying to do is to deliver these kind of advanced quantitative strategies and deliver them on chain in these products called vaults that anyone could access with immediate liquidity, full transparency, and you can see every trade as they happen, with, with a little bit of a delay, of course, but it's really trying to give these advanced quantitative trading strategies that have only been available for, let's say, hedge funds, and we want to bring it to pretty much anyone who's interested, in, and that should be everybody. Yeah, sure, and, and you come from the traditional, traditional finance world up until, I think, a year ago, so you're pretty new to the space. You might want to correct me there, but uh, what, what made you sort of see the light and, and jump into the crazy world of crypto? Well, I... I've been a professional money manager, portfolio manager, and a portfolio construction consultant for a very long time with a big specialty in quantitative finance. So I was actually building these quantitative strategies and I was presenting at a conference in New York about just over a year ago and someone came up to me who is now my partner and he said, listen, your algorithms and the way your quant strategies are working, you need to be doing this with the cryptocurrency space. So once I started investigating it, and then when you realize that the 24 seven nature of cryptocurrencies and the way that it trades, it presents unparalleled opportunities and just opened my eyes into this whole world of what I can do building algorithms that are not constrained by time or limited to exchange traded funds or individual equities. Yeah. Yeah, I just. It opened up by the light bulb went off and I saw everything that I can create now because of this entirely different market. Yeah. You know, you have to think about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies like you would with any other asset class and the way you're putting together a portfolio. So normally, you know, especially from a portfolio construction point of view, you are not supposed to consider each asset on its own individually in a vacuum. The whole idea is how you put that jigsaw puzzle together. Mm -hmm. So cryptocurrencies are just another jigsaw puzzle piece. So the question really then is how do you fit it in into such a way that you are comfortable with the amount of risk that you're taking for what you want to get out of it in the portfolio. And you know, cryptocurrency, just like everything else, it just takes that level of comfort. And, and that's really the way human nature is. The more you get used to the way something behaves and you need to understand that behavior, that is by far the most important thing. And it just takes time. So once you start getting used to it, even if it takes one month, two months, three months, and you get used to its behavior, people will get more comfortable. But I will say that people need to start considering it because you will be le you're leaving a source of alpha, as we call it in the industry, on the table. And especially as a lot of us get older and the younger generation comes up and they believe in this asset class, it's going to become more prominent. And I think we'd be foolish to ignore that potential. That's uh, great to hear and a, and a powerful message uh, for the new generations especially, but for everyone. Um, uh, is there a lesson from your quant years that, you know, perhaps you could help, you know, use to open people's eyes about crypto in particular? Is there anything, oh. perhaps uh, statistical data that, that you see and that would open people's eyes? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, the one thing that I think people need to get 
to think about is just, you know, you don't necessarily just have to buy and hold cryptocurrency. I mean, you can, and I, I would say, I'm, I would never advise people not to do it. I would say passive exposure is better than no exposure. But a lot of people, let's say Bitcoin has averaged about 100% a year, you know, return, you doubled your money pretty much every year for the past five, six years. But it also comes at a level of volatility at around 100% standard deviation is the metric we usually okay. use in the industry. That's a lot of volatility. Yeah. So you don't have to be exposed to it that way. So it is possible to let's say, well, I don't need to make 100% a year. I'm willing to accept 50 or 60, but to mm -hmm. cut that risk in half, so that at most you'll only lose maybe 30% when you go through the drawdowns. It's just another way that you have to think about it is that you could engineer the kind of risk and reward relationship that you want that fits for your portfolio. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing passive management. Same reasoning can be probably used to uh, to reach 200% returns or 500% returns, right? Well, exactly. I mean, if you want to, and, and that's possible too, you want to lever, you know, lever up your return to get that 200, 300, you can do that. And there are solutions for that. You can do it. Of course, that's going to come with the higher standard deviation, the higher risk that comes with it. But the point is when you have this kind of Asset, trading 24-7, you have a lot of potential to engineer different outcomes. Right, and I based think on that, your own risk appetite uh, level, etc. Exactly. And especially as we get more technology and more tools to deliver these kind of engineered solutions, it's just going to increase the opportunities and what's out there and all the possibilities. What we can do with AI, it's just you have better predictive ability. You have better tools that you can use to help you engineer some of these trading strategies. I am a big believer in what Agentic and AI can do. I still think it's a little bit early to see what Agentic AI is doing for trading. But I think that the AI aspect of this is going to allow us to definitely help with automation of these strategies and that's another amazing part about cryptocurrencies trading 24 7 is that you can use this AI to automate the trading strategies and that has huge potential so that's how I really see it changing it makes everything more efficient it opens up the entire trading market to different strategies that before you'd have to have a human being doing all the trading. And, and the one thing I will say, this is a joke that a friend of mine says quite often and I love it. If you really want to make money in the market, you need three things. You need a dog, a human, and a computer. The dog is there to keep the human away from the computer because humans are emotional. We've got all of our behavioral biases. So the more that we can start letting the computers take the emotion out of the equation, that's only going to make everybody a better investor. And a dog is also an emotional companion, right? So <laughs> emotional support companion. Well, I'm heavily <laughs> allergic to dogs, so I, I have to find another um, I guess, animal to prevent me from messing with my algorithms. Maybe right? a reptile then for you or something <laughs> like that. Nice to speak with you, Cordell. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. My pleasure.